Welcome to the seventh session of TISNET GK 2023. If you are a TISNET 2023 aspirant, stay with me for the next 10-15 minutes and we will discuss another set of very interesting questions related to TISNET. Generally, we model these questions on the kind of questions that have appeared in TISNET exam previously. But before we get started, here is something for you. So anybody who wants strategic inputs or current affairs or general knowledge related inputs for TISNET prep, they can subscribe to our channel Pathfinder for me. If you're looking for inputs on quantitative aptitude and logical reasoning, you can subscribe to our channel Mend Your Math. You could also join our WhatsApp group or Telegram channels. If you're looking for information on TISNET or if you have some queries or career related questions, you're welcome to WhatsApp us on 93439-21347 or 95222-92468 and we will gladly help you. And if you want some information on our courses related to TISNET, please log, in, log on to www.pathfinderforme.com. So with that, let us start with our first question. Salomi Zurabi Shivli was elected as first female president of which country? Your options are Croatia, Georgia, Estonia and Czech Republic. The correct answer here is the country of Georgia. Now Georgia was an erstwhile Soviet uh, country. And in 1991, it broke away from the Soviet uh, supremacy and they announced independence. So, she is elected as the fifth president of Georgia, Salomi Zurabi Shivli. And as I told you, it, Georgia announced its independence from USSR on 9th April 1991. And Georgia is also associated with Rose Revolution or revolution of roses in 2003. Now what is this revolution about? It was a non-violent change of power and with this rose revolution the Soviet era leadership ended in Georgia. So rose revolution, Georgia. Next question. The Satya Shodak Samaj was founded by your options are C. Rajkubalachari, Jyoti Rao Phule, uh, Mohandas Karamchand Gandhi uh, or Kanshi Ram. The correct answer here is Jyoti Rao Phule. Now he was a great socialist reformer thinker who talked about education for women, education for Dalits and Shudras and so on. So let us know a bit more about Satya Shodak Samaj. It was founded in 1873 by Jyotiba Phule who is also known by the name of Mahatma Phule. So this was in Maharashtra. He promoted education for the underprivileged sections, mainly women, Dalits and Shudras. He supported women's education in India and he was a socialist, social activist and thinker. And along with his wife Savitri Bhai Phule, he launched the first school for girls in Pune. And he worked very hard to remove untouchability and caste system. So, this is all the information on Satya Sodhak Maj and Jyoti Rao Phule. Next question. The renowned Hindustani musician Anna Purana Devi who passed away in 2018 was. Now, she was a sitarist. And she played a particular version of sitar called the Sur Bahar. So, Annapurna Devi, she was born as Roshan Arak Khan, was an Indian Surbahar player of Hindustani classical music. She was the daughter and disciple of Lauddin Khan of the Maihar Gharana. Incidentally, she was also the first wife of Pandit Ravi Shankar. And she led almost a reclusive life towards the end. She probably did not make many public appearances. So, Surbahar is a type of sitar in India. She was given the name of Annapurna, the title of Annapurna by Maharaja Brijanath Singh of the former Mahir estate. And it was by this name 
that she was popularly known although she was born as Roshanara Khan. Next question, which of the following is true regarding the book Samachar Chandrika? Your options are, it, published, it was published by Hindu orthodoxy in opposition to the ideas of Ram Mohan Roy. It was published in support of social reform movement of Raja Ram Mohan Roy. It was the first Bengali journal in print and edited by Gangadhar Bhattacharya. It was the first daily newspaper published by published in an Indian language. The correct answer is, it was published by Hindu orthodoxy in opposition to ideas of Ram Mohan Rai. See, early 19th century was a time when many social activists and thinkers, they were opposed to traditional ideas and traditional rituals uh, of, of the Hindu orthodoxy. So, when they were opposed to these ideas, they came out with several, you know, they conducted activities like Raja Ram Mohan Roy, he came up with a newspaper. And it was against Raja Ram Mohan Roy's idea that Samachar Chandrika was published by the Hindu Brahmin orthodoxy. So, it was published by Bhavani, Chandra, Bhavani Charan Bandupadhyay in 1822. It was an orthodox Hindu newspaper of the Dharma Sabha and campaigned against social reforms including the ban on Sati by Lord William Bentley. In fact, they were opposed to a lot of reformers, ideas and thoughts including education for Dalits. So, Raja Ramon Roy published Samvad Kaumudi in 1821 and the Hindu orthodoxy commissioned the Samachar Chandrika to oppose his opinions. Next, according to B.R. Ambedkar, which of the following was considered as the heart and soul of the constitution? Your options are right to constitutional remedies, right to freedom, right to equality and cultural and educational rights. The correct answer in this case is right to constitutional remedies. Now, what are these rights to constitutional remedies? So, if you feel some of your rights have been violated, then you have access to rights to constitutional remedies. Article 32 deals with the right to constitutional remedies. So, if there is an aggrieved citizen whose rights have been violated, he can directly approach the court for a remedy. So, and if it is a fundamental right which has been violated, the person can directly approach the High Court or the Supreme Court. Now, what are these rights to constitutional remedies? There are five rights to constitutional remedies. Habeas corpus, mandamus, prohibition, certiorari and co warranto. Let us look at each one of them one by one by one. So, habeas corpus, a public official must bring any person detained in front of the court within a reasonable time frame. That means, if you detain a person as a public official, if you detain a citizen, then you have to bring the detained person into the court within a reasonable time frame. And not only that, the public official has to provide a valid reason for the detention. This is to ensure that unlawful or forceful or unnecessary detentions of common people can be avoided. Then you have mandamus. So it's a judicial uh, remedy in the form of an order from a court to any subordinate court and the subordinate court is being ordered by the su superior court to act and perform its duty as per the legal process. So if the authority is doing something which is against the legal process, then the superior court will order it not to do so and if the, and if the court, the subordinate court is not taking any action then the superior court will ask the lower court to take an action that is mandamus. Prohibition is another writ. It asks a subordinate to stop doing something that is against the law. So this is generally issued by a superior court to an inferior authority, not necessarily a court, to stop proceeding with a case that does not fall within its jurisdiction. 
then you have certiorari it's a court process to seek judicial review of a decision taken by a lower court and co warranto a special legal action used to resolve a dispute whether or not a person has enough qualification or the right to continue to a particular post that he or she occupies so these are five constitutional remedies available to you as a citizen next which among the following places the 23rd jain tirthankar was a uh, tirthankar was associated the correct answer is varanasi so he was tirthankar parshwanath he was in fact the 23rd tirthankars of the jain tradition he was the son of king ashwasena and queen vama of varanasi and he lived in varanasi around 800 bc now who is a tirthankar so tirthankar are people who are highly devoted and they have got rid of the cycle of birth and death so tirthankar parshanath achieved nirvan on summit shikhar in jainism there were 24 tirthankars starting with rishabnath and the last tirthankar was mahavir so as i told you just now tirthankar is a person who has conquered the cycle of sansar the cycle of birth death and rebirth and made a path for others to follow next the hymns of rigved were composed by composed by i think uh, vedvyas but they were recited by hotris in this question the more appropriate word should not be composed by but recited by hotris hotris are basically priests so rigved is the earliest known ved it's also the earliest known manus- manuscript in indo in any of the indo european languages so it's a collection of 1028 hymns and it is recited by hotri or the priest so vyasa is the composer of vedas the rigved is divided into 10 books called mandalas and the chief deity mentioned in the rigved is indra although there is a mention of surya there is a mention mention of garud and so on the famous gayatri mantra also comes from the rigved next which dynasty ashoka the great was an emperor of now this is a well known fact ashoka was the king of maurya dynasty now maurya dynasty was founded by chandragupta maurya we all know the story chanakya was his teacher and he helped chandragupta maurya found the maurya dynasty uh, chanakya is incidentally also the author of arthashastra ashoka was the grandson of chandragupta and son of bindusar so this kingdom was founded in 8322 bc and ended in 185 bc it was ended by pushyamitra shunga who started the shunga dynasty in 185 bc next drishyam hindi movie released in 2015 was originally made in which indian language so hindi malayalam tamil and kannad the correct answer in this case will be malayalam all of us know that next in which of the following modern areas was the amri culture developed the options are northeast states of india sindh and balochistan of pakistan eastern iraq and south india the correct answer is sindh and balochistan area of pakistan so amri culture was a culture that predates the harappan culture so it refers to archaeological sites of sindh and balochistan provinces in uh, pakistan and it flourished in 4th and 3rd millennium bc kunal and kot dg are some of the prominent sites of this particular culture culture and as i said it predates the harappan culture it ha- it occurred it flourished in 4th and 3rd millennia bc so with this we come to an end of our uh, discussion for this particular session and these are for you if you want to subscribe to our channels you can scan the qr codes and subscribe 
and if you want to directly get in touch with me you can contact me on whatsapp on this number 9826062415 thank you